FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. Good evening. And I'm Bill Cornwell sitting in for Paul Swan, The Drive with Paul Swan. It is brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Be here for the next hour or so and looking forward to uh, talking a little sports. Uh, we're going to take a close look at football in a lot of ways today. Uh, first off, if you'd like to join in on the conversation, you can call us on the Miller Lite phone line, which is 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-TALK. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. Well, let's look forward to uh, – some sports tonight. Of course, it'll be baseball uh, right here on these very airwaves on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Well, about an hour and a half, it will be time for some Pirates baseball. And the Pirates are continued to struggle. They will host Milwaukee again this evening. Uh, last night, they lost to the Brewers 9-7, to and that was a win that the Brewers badly needed for the simple reason that uh, – they came in from Chicago in a weekend series with the Cubs, and uh, they were bruised and bloodied after the Cubs swept them. But uh, they came into Pittsburgh, and unfortunately for the Pirates last night, uh, the Brewers got well. So those two teams play again tonight, and Pittsburgh's kind of trying to get off a bit, a bit of a snide of their own. Now, last night down at Great American Ballpark, uh, the Reds uh, beat the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim by a score of 7-4. to four. Those two teams play again tonight at 7-10. Only a two-game series. This is the final game of that series. Uh, kind of interesting this year in interleague play. Uh, the uh, Angels and Reds played two out at Angel Stadium in Anaheim about a month ago. And then they're playing two at Great American Ballpark uh, yesterday and tonight. And uh, the Reds got the win last night, as we mentioned, by a score seven to four. Meanwhile, the Indians uh, hosting uh, Texas this evening. Uh, the Rangers beat the Indians last night up at Progressive Field by a score of one nothing. Of course, the Indians have kind of gotten themselves back into the fray in the American League Central. They were double digit down to uh, the Minnesota Twins for most of the season, but. Uh, the Twins have slowed down a bit, and the Indians have got hot all of a sudden. Their bats for sure have gotten hot, and that means that uh, they have definitely uh, been able to uh, kind of get back into the swing of things. If nothing else, if, if not getting into the uh, battle for the division, at least they're in the hunt for a playoff spot as a wild card. So, again, that's the Indians hosting Texas tonight. Of course, we're just a couple of days away from uh, – our regional teams getting it going on the gridiron with preseason football. Thursday, it gets started up in Cleveland as, at First Energy's Field as the Browns will host the Redskins. Of course, the Cleveland Browns are, I guess you would say, the sexy pick this year in the AFC Central, right? the AFC North, that is. Most people think that they will uh, come away the winner and that the um, Steelers and the Ravens will be battling for second place. We certainly shall see. But the Browns will host the Redskins on Thursday night, and believe me, a lot of folks in Cleveland are excited about this Browns team. The crowds that they are drawing in Berea, Ohio at training camp, huge. So much, so much interest. Now, Friday night up at Heinz Field, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who've had a Quite interesting offseason. Of course, Le'Veon Bell is gone. And, uh, of course, they lost uh, their, their great receiver, Brown. Uh, he's a, a Oakland Raider now. Le'Veon Bell is now a New York Jet. So the Steelers uh, having to plug in some new pieces. Well, they are hosting the Tampa Bay Bucks on Friday up at Heinz Field. And, of course, the Bucks they had changed themselves, new head coach, and Bruce Arians, and uh, this is going to be a, I, some people say, a do-or-die year for Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, 
Uh, he has not been the big performer that most folks thought he would be when he was the number one draft pick a few years ago. This is going to be put up or shut up time. I believe it is his final year of his rookie deal. So if he is uh, renewed, he's going to have to earn it with a play on the field and stay in healthy, says the Steelers host the Bucks on Friday night. Finally, the Bengals get things going on Saturday, and oh, do they have a tough chore. The Bengals will be at Kansas City on Saturday night. Of course, most folks think that Kansas City will be the AFC champion this year. Of course, Patrick Mahomes and the, that team, great offense, and they improved their defense in the offseason, made some coaching changes, also made some changes when it comes to personnel. And so they feel that um, they're more of a well-rounded ball club. And what we shall see is that, again, the Bengals will be at Kansas City. That is on Saturday night. A little bit more news out of the NFL. Representatives for running back Ezekiel Elliott have told the Dallas Cowboys that he will not play this season without a new contract. That was according to uh, comments made to ESPN's Jacina Anderson today, the source adding that at the time it's not likely that Elliott's holdout continues into the regular season based on the belief that Cowboys under Jerry Jones wants to get a new deal done before week one. Elliott informed the Cowboys that all the way back in January he would not play without a new contract. Of course, there is so much uh, negotiating going on with the Cowboys because the Cowboys are also uh, talking extensions with quarterback Dak Prescott and wide receiver Amari Cooper. And so uh, there is uh, so much, uh, I guess you could say, uh, loose ends for the Dallas Cowboys. They'd like to get all that contract talk taken away, get Ezekiel Elliott in camp, get Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper uh, signed, sealed, and delivered for more years. But uh, Jerry Jones and his crew in Dallas have their hands full right now trying to get uh, those uh, contracts taken care of. So uh, if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, I know you're hoping that uh, all that um, turmoil will uh, get away. Now, after uh, we talk to our uh, upcoming special guest about uh, one of our Conference USA brethren from Marshall here in just a couple of moments, we're going to look at uh, the uh, schedules for college football here in our region, and then we're going to look at some of the high schools. Uh, of course, everybody in high school is uh, now doing uh, their uh, due diligence, and they are in practice. Uh, yesterday was the start of practice for West Virginia high school football, uh, they were the last state to get going. Ohio got started last Thursday on August 1st. And uh, Kentucky, they're really in their third week of practice. Uh, those guys in the Bluegrass State, they're almost to the point where they're maybe ready for some scrimmaging and some games. But uh, they'll get their season started actually a couple of weeks from Friday. But it'll be three weeks from Friday for West Virginia and Ohio schools as far as as the season is concerned. So, but we'll get into those schedules. Uh, college football, uh, we'll look for maybe about the bottom of the hour, let, uh, let you know maybe some times and some other things going on, not just with Marshall, but obviously with West Virginia, Ohio State, Ohio, Moorhead State. We'll look at them, obviously the Kentucky Wildcats. We'll even let you know the schedule for the uh, Kentucky Christian guys down in Grayson, Kentucky, and then we'll uh, wrap up the show and we'll talk a little bit about uh, high school football and what we can expect. Of course, a lot of interest with uh, high school football and Class AAA in West Virginia here in, and in our uh, kindred family of stations. We got you covered because we carry all three of the, those AAA teams right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We will once again be your home for Huntington High football. On uh, the River 97.9, we will once again uh, carry Cabell Midland Knights football. And then on the Planet 92.7, we will once again be the home for the Spring Valley Timberwolves. So all three AAA teams in West Virginia will be carried and carried on your kindred family of stations. We'll get into more of that. We're going to take a break right now, and uh, when we come back, we're going to be with the voice of the Old Dominion Monarchs, Ted Alexander, and 
what we're going to talk about with Ted, not as much about the team, but uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, a miracle construction job down in Norfolk, Virginia, as they have a brand spanking new stadium built in less than a year, and it is going to be one of the best in college football. Time for a break. We'll be back in just a moment here on The Drive. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Good afternoon. About 521 our time. Bill Cornwell back with uh, The Drive with Paul Swan. Uh, brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. If you'd like to join us this afternoon, you can call us on the Miller Lite phone line, which is 877-420-TALK. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. Um, we're working on a few phone issues, but we're hoping to uh, momentarily get in touch with Tell Alexander, who is the play-by-play man for the Old Dominion Monarchs. Of course, the Monarchs, not expected to do that well in Conference USA this year. And uh, last year, they were 4-8. and eight. Of course, Marshall went down and put a pretty good uh, licking on them uh, in Norfolk. But the big story with Old Dominion is the fact that the with Old Dominion is the fact that uh, they built a brand spanking new stadium in less than a year. Uh, when the season was over, they literally started knocking down the old S.B. Ballard Stadium. And on that same site, as soon as the destruction was done, they uh, started going up and building up. And uh, just like that, they have about a 21,000-seat brand-new stadium uh, with uh, a lot of amenities. And probably the, for we that work in the media, the nicest thing they got, they got a brand-new press box. It's a brand-new press box that has an elevator because in the past when we worked a game at Old Dominion, uh, we've had to literally schlep uh, broadcast equipment up several rows of steps and then up uh, steep steps to an old press box. The old uh, Ballard Stadium was built in the 30s, but uh, they got a brand-new one, and we're working on our uh, phone issues, and hopefully Tail Alexander will be with us in a moment. Uh, Talk a little bit about this new stadium and also about uh, the uh, the Old Dominion football program as uh, they get ready for another year. And it might be a year of decision for uh, the head coach of the Monarchs in uh, Bobby Wilder. Bobby Wilder has been uh, the coach of the Monarchs ever since the program got started. This is his 11th year. And he has a pretty decent record of 76 and 45, but again, four and eight last year. Uh, fans uh, not at all happy, and uh, they're looking for change. They made some changes. They actually hired two new defensive coordinators because defense was a major problem for that team. Uh, no, not really changes in the offensive side. Of course, they made news last year. Remember, they had Virginia Tech in Norfolk, and they knocked off the the Hokies. Uh, they did a number on the Hokies. Now, the Hokies will host ODU this year, second game of the season on September 7th, and I will guarantee you that all the Hokie fans and Hokie Nation will remember what happened to them at the hands of the Monarchs last year, and uh, that uh, that should be interesting. But uh, uh, they also have a game at Virginia and Charlottesville this year. Now, their first game in their new stadium will be an in-city affair as they will host Norfolk State. Uh, that'll be the lid lifter on the new stadium. The The stadium is still going to be S.B. Ballard Stadium. The field has a new name, Cornblow Field. And, again, they have spent a lot of money in a little bit of time. Uh, if you've ever been to a game down there at, at Old Dominion, a lot of Marshall fans have. It's not too bad of a trip. Of course, on the, you just st get on I-64 and you stay on 64 all the way to Norfolk. Uh, but uh, stadium there uh, uh, has uh, nice suites in one end zone, a uh, uh, large uh, end zone seating area. But the, it's the uh, sideline seats that have been fully replaced. And uh, that will be uh, something to see. Uh, double decked, uh, all uh, brand new, a lot of amenities. And probably one of the biggest things uh, 
more space, uh, go to the restroom, go to the concession stands, uh, something that uh, that stadium built in the 1930s didn't necessarily have a lot of, a lot of the creature comforts that we're used to now in stadiums. And they, and they really, uh, they say that this has been a, uh, a real boon for their ticket sales. And the, the fact that, uh, you know, folks who want to be a part of that new stadium. And uh, so hopefully uh, for them, they'll get in put on the field to go with what's off the field again. But great new stadium, uh, new video board, new press box, up-to-date press box. It's going to be uh, in, in great shape. But again, the Monarchs are not expected to be uh, one of the better teams, certainly in Conference USA East. Of course, Marshall is the favorite in Conference USA East. I'll give you a little um, preview in about maybe a week and a half or so. We will have our insider uh, football preview out, and we'll talk about the herd. We'll talk about Conference USA. We will talk about uh, regional colleges and universities, and we'll have a full uh, high school football preview written by Dave Walsh. And we'll have you all those schedules in magazine form. So look forward to that. Maybe about a week and a half. That is the August Insider, the first uh, edition of the Insider for the new school year. Of course, Marshall, uh, they continued their uh, practices today. Uh, started at about 3.50. Going to continue. And those practices will remain open for the next couple of weeks. Now, when school starts a week from Monday, that's when practices will be closed, and they will be closed all the way up to uh, the opening game coming up on the 31st of August as the VMI Key Dance, an old Southern Conference rival, come to Huntington. Um, I don't know if Paul has really said much about it on, on the show, but uh, for you fans that are used to uh, our uh, extended pregame tailgates, well, we're going to continue that this year. We're going to get going three hours before kickoff time, start our pregame activity over on the stage in the tailgate area, and uh, that will be uh, that will be going. To, uh, of course, we have the concert series. Uh, the Go Mark concert series will be on that stage in the uh, west lot once again. Already, we've already booked some of the acts for that, and so that, that'll be uh, going on maybe about two hours before game time. But we will be on the air three hours before kickoff time before every Marshall game. Uh, either on home games, we'll be over at the stadium. Of course, Paul and Dave Walsh will be at Roosters on days when the herd is on the road. Of course, the herd will not be on the road very much this year. Only five road games. Only five road games this year. And um, seven home games. So, herd fans looking forward to that. And uh, we will... We will look forward to that. But, uh, again, it's going to be an interesting year for the Old Dominion Monarchs. Uh, unfortunately, we've had our continued uh, phone issues. And we'll, we'll hopefully maybe in a couple of days try to get with Ted once, uh, Ted Alexander once again. Uh, uh, give you an idea what the, they have coming back. They got one of the better running backs in Kayshawn Strong. Uh, had nine touchdowns last year. Uh, but they uh, had some quarterbacking issues, and they uh, actually had some uh, junior college guys come in. They had a former Michigan State quarterback, Messiah DeWeavers, uh, one of the guys vying for the quarterbacking job. Also, another Juco transfer, Stone Smart, uh, is involved at that. So, some changes in personnel, and they've got a big, big uh, hole to fill on the defensive side. O'Shane Ziminis their defensive lineman who was an all-conference player and was drafted by the NFL, O'Shane Ziminis, is gone. And they lost their defensive tackle, Miles Fox. He transferred to Wake Forest. They do have a couple of linebackers back, Lawrence Garner and Jordan Young. So uh, that's what the, what the lookout is for the Old Dominion Monarchs. But, uh, again, not expected uh, to do a lot. 4-8 record last year and maybe a uh, – Year of decision, more or less, for the uh, 11-year coach of the Monarchs, Bobby Wilder. The only coach that program has had since they started it back uh, about a decade ago. And uh, just haven't, uh, last couple of years just haven't gone very well. Right now we're going to take our bottom of the hour break. When we come back, 
We're going to look at the entire regional college football schedule, kind of go through it, and uh, you can uh, kind of make your decisions. Uh, you know, if you want to make it to games, uh, what games are special? Well, it's going to be uh, what we're going to be talking about in the next uh, segment. You're listening to The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Bob of the hour, just past the Bob of the hour, actually. Bill Cornwell sitting in for Paul Swan here on The Drive, and uh, we've gotten our phone issues taken care of, and... uh, We have made connection with the voice of the Old Dominion Monarchs, Ted Alexander. And, Ted, welcome to the airwaves. Hard to believe we're just less than a a, uh, month till the season gets started. And i got to say, you guys have done a miracle down there in Norfolk with the construction of the new S.B. Ballard Stadium. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. 25 days from right now, we'll be seeing this place fill in with some 22,000 fans and an 18-month construction job. It was whittled down to nine. We'll have hopefully come to almost a complete completion. Uh, the excitement is building now. The noise you hear behind me are the tractors going back and forth. They're putting <laughs> the sand and the rubber into the brand new, newly laid artificial turf. And just the excitement's building down here with the construction of the new facility. Of course, uh, uh, so many nice amenities that this stadium's going to have. And, and, you know, for folks here with, in, uh, with uh, Marshall uh, who made the trip down there, they know that the, that, that stadium had certainly uh, had seen its years, and, and it certainly did a good job as uh, the, the home for the uh, renovated and, uh, and rejuvenated Old Dominion football program. But certainly, uh, Ted, it's time it had, had come, and uh, it, it, it was such a need for this work. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, you, you have a place that uh, you call home, but you realize when you invite guests over, you sort of have to uh, uh, be a little bit embarrassed about it. You do your darndest, and you try and treat people as well as possible, but you realize the facility isn't up to snuff after going to places like the Home of the Herd and, and other places around uh, Conference USA. But this, I think, was the fans' desire. More comfort, bigger seats, seat backs, bench backs, more concessions, more restrooms. You don't think when maybe you're up in the press box doing the game or covering the game about what a fan needs to have to make an enjoyable experience. And part of that is a good restroom, a good seat, and some good food. Do the uh, the folks, uh, certainly your, your A.D. Wood Seelig and, and the construction folks, they think it's going to be kind of a last minute to get it finished? Do you think they think they'll be well done by the time you guys play Norfolk State uh, at the end of the month? I think uh, it'll be a sprint to the tape. Quite honestly, when, when you talk about all the bells and whistles, I mean, it's, it's like stepping into a brand new vehicle and seeing one of those touch screens for the first time. The car is going to be able to drive and be safe and be much better than any car you've ever driven before. But it might take a little while to figure out how to use all the gadgets and make sure all the gadgets are up and running. I know one thing that you and, and, and uh, the voice of the herd, Steve Cotton and myself, are looking forward to is having a nice press facility to work in because uh, you've been doing it for years. Steve and I have done it for our three visits down to Norfolk, you know, schlepping equipment up many rows uh, and uh, up, up steep steps to get to the to a small press box. And we're going to have nice facilities, uh, you and, and uh, the visitors, to work in. A total of three elevators, two on the press box side. We'll get you up. It's a, it's a press box that's going to be higher than the view was before, but not way high. Uh, but the elevators, I mean, uh, visitors and the home folks as well in the first 10 years of Old Dominion football here, uh, we needed Sherpas to get all the equipment up to the <laughs> press level. Now we'll, now we'll have some aids, including that elevator. And uh, believe me, it was one of the first things on the wish list for those of us covering the game. Exactly. Hey, let's talk about the, the Monarchs this year. Of course, coming off a 4-8 and eight record and uh, – uh, you know, a lot of changes, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, before we got uh, connected with you, I was talking about uh, some of the guys who are gone. Uh, one good thing you do have, uh, you got Keyshawn Strong back. He's going to be a, a, a big, uh, big returnee as far as running back. But I know there's is there still a little bit of uh, uncertainty as to who's going to be the quarterback. Uh, well, they've got 46 new guys in camp, and that can either wow. uh, fill you with, uh, with, with with fear or excitement or a little bit of both, and I think the latter is the case here because so many new faces here, they're all learning each other. 
They've got a brand new defensive coordinator, David Blackwell, came from uh, East Carolina. Uh, new strength and conditioning folks, and you realize how important that position is. And ever since uh, uh, the first of the year, they've just been really making strides in the weight room, not only with with the numbers, but the attitude and the spirit and the motivation and understanding that work in January doesn't pay dividends until you know October or November. So it's a new look team. Of course, you lose all those catches with Duhard and Fulgham Jeremy yeah. Cox out of the backfield and Blake Larusa. The quarterback. So lots of question marks. A lot of question marks still uh, as we uh, uh, are in the first week of, of uh, fall camp. But those answers will hopefully start to be answered by August the 31st. But I, I think this is going to be a, a team that uh, gets better as the season goes along and figures things out as the season goes along, perhaps like a lot of teams. Yeah, well, we, we mentioned before we got with you, one guy that's going to be really missed on the defensive side is, is Shane Zimenez. Guy was an NFL draft pick, a great talent. And he will definitely be missed this year by the Monarchs. They're going to try and play a little faster on defense, use sort of a bandit position at the defensive end, the stand-up end there, and, and try and get a lot of folks involved there. Lawrence Garner, uh, the leading tackler, returned. So that's good news there. The secondary has another year of experience. But I think the Monarchs are going to need some help from some faces that we haven't seen yet some names we haven't mentioned yet if they're going to have success here in 2019. Before you guys get into Conference USA, and of course uh, uh, you guys have got some proving to do because uh, not picked very high in, in CUSA East, but we mentioned the Norfolk State game to open the stadium, but then you got a tough couple of weeks. Uh, uh, you, you got to go to Hokey Land, and I know they remember what happened uh, last year in Norfolk. Then you got to go a, a couple of weeks after that to Charlottesville, so a couple of interesting games in the uh, in the state of Virginia for you guys. Yeah, Norfolk State, then at uh, uh, Virginia Tech, then uh, the, the bye, and then at UVA, and then back home for East Carolina to wrap up the non-conference slate. It was a barn burner down in Greenville a year ago between these two teams, yeah. uh, a game the Monarchs thought they could have won and should have won. But you know East Carolina is going to try and get better, too. They had an off season and they're going to be working hard. Everybody's working hard, uh, and you just hope it all comes together at the right time. Of course, Bobby Wilder, this is his 11th season. And one thing I always note about Bobby, he's a very upbeat, positive uh, coach. And, uh, you know, uh, what what has been his take uh, in this early part of practice and uh, looking into the season? Well, he's, as you said, the eternal optimist. And, and he realizes, you know, that the last few years haven't been uh, what uh, has become uh, uh, expected around Hampton Roads and the Old Dominion football program. But he also realizes – with the shakeups in the staff, the attitude in the weight room, and these new faces that are coming in hungry, realizing if they perform, they're going to get some playing time. I think he's excited about this bunch. A lot of things to prove, a lot of unknowns going in, but I think he's, he kind of likes the, the vibe of this group at this stage of the campaign. Well, we'll certainly uh, follow what the Monarchs are doing uh, before you guys come to Huntington to take on the herd on the 12th of October. And uh, always look forward to, to visiting with you and uh, visiting with our, our good friends at Old Dominion. And, and one good thing for the Monarchs, at least they're not Marshall's homecoming game as they were like two years ago. So maybe that's some progress, Ted. Well, the thing is, the, the herd is always ready to roll, and the, and the fan base is fabulous. And you guys do a great job down there in southern West Virginia just kicking butts uh, and taking names and year in and year out provide not only a great product for your fans, but even on down years, you hang in there and you realize the effort's always going to be there. And we know that's going to be the case in October. So you know you can always judge how your Conference USA season is going by how you do against Marshall. And this year will be no exception. Exactly. Well, Ted, uh, we certainly look forward to seeing you then and uh, look forward to see how uh, the, the stadium uh, shapes up uh, in, uh, on Norfolk, Norfolk State coming up on the, uh, the end of the month. And uh, uh, folks who haven't seen it yet, they need to go to the Old Dominion uh, Twitter feeds and uh, Facebook pages. Check out this stadium because it is unbelievable. Ted Lott, thanks a lot, friend. My pleasure. Have All a right. good summer. All Rest right. of it. Okay, we'll see you in, in a couple of months. Ted Alexander, the voice of the Old Dominion Monarchs, talking about the brand spanking new S.B. Ballard Stadium at Cornblow Field. It's a class facility. They have built a brand new stadium there in less than a year and uh, it was much needed, and it stacks up with any facility in Conference USA. Uh, they, they, very much like Marshall, have a tough non-conference schedule opening up at home against uh, the uh, Norfolk State uh, team there in town, and, of course, an FCS team. 
But then they have uh, road games against Virginia Tech, who they beat last year in Norfolk. Uh, they have to go to Charlottesville a couple of weeks after that. Then they have a home game with East Carolina, and as Ted said, that they played uh, East Carolina toe-to-toe last year down in Greenville, North Carolina. So that will be their non-conference schedule before they get into Conference USA play. And their first Conference USA uh, game will be at home against the uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers on October 5th. Time for another break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the entire uh, regional um, college schedule and we'll kind of let you know when big games are, uh, some of the activities around some of the games. Time for a break. We'll be back just in a moment here on The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's 548 here on The Drive with Paul Swan, Bill Corn, uh, Bill Cornwell. Subbing for Paul, uh, Paul today. Drive is brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. If you'd like to give us a call, got some thoughts on uh, what we've been talking about today or anything else in sports, give us a call on the Miller Lite phone line. 877-420-TALK. Miller Lite hold true great taste. Only 96 calories original light beer. What we get into is uh, looking at schedules for college football in our region. A uh, little news from the Marshall Athletic Department. Marshall Athletics claimed Conference USA Sport Academic Awards for tennis and track and field in the league's uh, honors that were released today. Tennis and track and field led the way in each of their respective sports for the 2018-19 academic here and these are uh, GPAs. Tennis had a GPA as a team of almost 3.8. That is unbelievable. Track and field, a much larger team had a um, GPA of just under three. Uh, So they were the best in the Conference USA in their sports and uh, some uh, of the individual uh, performers for Marshall were given uh, the Commissioner's Academic Medal. The awards Cap, another impressive year for Marshall Athletics in the classroom. The department boasted six programs that posted perfect single-year APRs and nine squads that had multi-year rates equal to or higher than the national average. So we always say when these uh, bits of information come out that Marshall athletes are not just doing it on the field or on the court. They are getting it done in the classroom. So congratulations to the tennis team and to the track and field team for their good work in the classroom. We, as we promised, we get to it. Uh, college football schedules in our region. Uh, uh, it's going to be a fun year, an interesting year, a challenging year. Of course, Marshall comes into the season, uh, the uh, pick by uh, most folks as the favorite in Conference USA's East Division. Of course, the last time that uh, was true was 2014. What did Marshall do that year? Well, they won Conference USA. They defeated Louisiana Tech in the championship game at Jones C. Edwards Stadium on a cold, rainy day, got the job done, and the Herd uh, went on to win its uh, only Conference USA football title, of course, uh, under the tutelage of Doc Holliday. This is Doc Holliday's 10th year, hard to believe, but uh, this is a decade now as head coach of the Thundering Herd for Doc Holliday. Uh, There's so many folks who have tried over the years to maybe entice Doc to leave. Doc says he likes it here. He is re-upped his contracts, and uh, I would say that Doc will retire from here when the time comes. But, of course, Marshall's uh, first game uh, will be here before you know it. Uh, August 31st, 6.30, uh, kickoff against VMI. Then the Herd has quite the challenge. They go on the road in less than a week after that VMI game to play on the blue turf and on national TV against the Boise State Broncos. That's going to be a 9 o'clock kickoff on a Friday night. Back home for a couple of games, big uh, non-conference game. September 14th, another 6.30 kickoff against the Ohio Bobcats. Yes, the Battle of the Bell is back. We love it. Um, the uh, That rivalry's been uh, dormant for about three, four years, but they're back, and it's going to be back for a long time. The Herd and the Bobcats doing battle at the Joan on September 14th. Then uh, the Heard has one of its two open weeks in the season, September 21st. September 28th, the Cincinnati Bearcats come to the Joan. 5 o'clock kickoff, 
Now, Ohio is the favorites in the MAC East. Uh, Cincinnati uh, coming off a really good second year for uh, Coach Luke Fickle last year. Well, the Bearcats, uh, they are one of the favorites, along with obviously UCF in the American Conference. So uh, uh, the Herd is playing good teams, and Boise State is always one of the top teams in the Mountain West. So uh, that will do it for the uh, non-conference schedule. Then the Herd gets into the conference schedule. October 5th, uh, road trip down to Middle Tennessee State, 3.30 kickoff down there in Murfreesboro. Then uh, the game we talked about just a moment ago with Ted Alexander, October 12th, 2.30 kickoff at the Joan, the Old Dominion Monarchs, first conference home game for Marshall. October 18th, uh, a Friday night game at 6.30. The Herd will be in Boca Raton against Florida Atlantic. Yes, they're one mile from the beach, as they like to tell you down in Boca Raton. October 26th, homecoming against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Uh, 2.30 kickoff there. Then November 2nd, Marshall on the road down in Houston, Texas at Rice. 3.30 kickoff down there. November 15th, after uh, a uh, off week on November the 9th, November 15th, Louisiana Tech. That is a Friday night game, 7 o'clock at the Joan. Then the Herds down in Charlotte, 3.30 on the 23rd. Back on uh, Thanksgiving weekend, November 30th, a noon kickoff against Florida International. And if uh, one team has not clinched the MAC East at that point, a lot of folks think this could be the game that decides the MAC East as the Herd and FIU are kind of co-favorites, but the Herd is mostly the favorite in Conference USA East. Uh, looking into other schools, uh, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky's got an interesting schedule this year. Uh, they open it up with the Toledo Rockets on August 31st at noon. Um, September 7th, Eastern Michigan is a 7.30 home game. Interesting game here. This was supposed to be an Eastern Michigan home game. Uh, of course, uh, they feel like they can make more money coming to Lexington and playing that rather than hosting that game. So they said, Kentucky, we'll come down there. You pay us a certain amount. And that's what they did. Uh, so Toledo and Eastern Michigan. September 14th, the showdown with Florida at uh, Kroger Field at 7 o'clock. Of course, the Cats uh, ended that long losing streak to Florida last year, winning down in the swamp. Uh, September 21st, a big SEC game crossover at Mississippi State. September 28th, uh, UK is at South Carolina. October 12th, the Cats are home for homecoming against the Arkansas Razorbacks. October 19th. Uh, UK is at Georgia, a uh, traditional battle there. October 26th, the Missouri Tigers are at Kroger Field. November 9th, after uh, another off week, the, the Cats host the Tennessee Vols at uh, Kroger Field. Then it's at, at Vanderbilt November 16th. And uh, Tennessee Martin, uh, the FCS team, comes to Lexington November 23rd. And then the final Saturday of the season, November 30th, uh, the Louisville Cardinals come to Kroger Field. Field. So UK, a lot of questions about them. Of course, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, big time guys gone. Jared Allen, number one draft pick. Benny Snell, great runner for the Cats, no longer at UK. We'll see how they react. Uh, West Virginia, they got James Madison to open the season on August 31st, two o'clock, September 7th. They go to Missouri noon game. That should be an interesting game there for uh, the the uh, ears and the Tigers. September 14th, noon kickoff in Morgantown. North Carolina State comes to town. Second year in a row that NC State has come to West Virginia to play. Of course, they came to Huntington to play Marshall last year. September 21st, uh, Big 12 opener for the Mountaineers. They are at Kansas. October 5th, big game in Morgantown. Homecoming and the Texas Longhorns will be in Milan Puskar Stadium, October 12th. A very good and improving Iowa State program comes to Morgantown, October 19th. The showdown with Oklahoma in Norman, October 31st at Baylor. Uh, November 9th, uh, Texas Tech comes to Morgantown. Uh, then it's a trip out to Manhattan, Kansas, and Kansas State, November 16th. November 23rd, Oklahoma State. Home game, final home game of the season. Then uh, the Mountaineers in the regular season, Friday, November 29th at TCU. Of course, Ohio State, they opened the season with a Conference USA rival of Marshall. Florida Atlantic plays up at Ohio Stadium August 31st at noon. Uh, another Cincinnati opponent, uh, the Cincinnati Bearcats, will be taking on the uh,
Buckeyes September 7th, just a few weeks before they come to Huntington to play Marshall. Big Ten opener for Ohio State's at Indiana September 14th. September 21st, Miami Red Hawks will be in Columbus. September, September 28th, a improving Nebraska team. And Nebraska hosts Ohio State this year. This will be a big, big-time uh, test for new head coach Ryan Day and the Scarlet and Gray. October 5th, homecoming in Columbus. Michigan State is the opposition. October 18th at Northwestern. And, of course, Northwestern has certainly become one of the tougher teams in the Big Ten. October 26th, Wisconsin's a home game, followed by a Maryland home game with Ohio State November 9th. On the road at Rutgers November 16th. Penn State, big showdown in Columbus on November 23rd. And, of course, November 30th, it is the Michigan Wolverines. I'll be back in a couple of days, and we'll get into what I promised as far as high school schedules. We'll talk a bit more high school football, and we're hopefully going to talk to Wade Brander, the voice of the VMI Key Desk, kind of talk about their upcoming trip to take on the Marshall Dunring Herd. Thanks, Gabriel Sellards, for hanging with me and doing the engineering work. I'm Bill Cornwell for The Drive. So long. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.